Hello again, this is Lino Tadros and I'm happy to spend a few minutes with you showing you how to install a .NET Core renderer for your Syfinity CMS. So let's go ahead and get started and give you some tips and tricks on how the stuff works. So far, I've actually already created a CMS system. Notice it's running on port 65214 here on the screen. Uh, and if you don't know how to create one from scratch, there is another video in the subscription you can actually take a look at. Uh, I will also put the link in the comments so that you can actually uh, take a look at the video on how to create one of those. But you will do, uh, uh, you will create one of those based on the regular Windows based .NET Framework 4.8. I'm using right now Syfinity 14.3, but this is the same thing that you will do for 14.2 or in future version of Syfinity as well. As soon as you have your Syfinity ready to go, uh, for the CMS system itself, there is one feature that you have to enable to make it easy for you to be able to use a .NET Core renderer. And that one, if going to administration, clicking on web services for the Syfinity CMS under .NET Framework 4.8. And the one thing we're going to do, we're going to go to the default web service that comes with Syfinity, and we're going to enable that to be accessible by everyone. All right, and from that point on, I will show you how easy it is to go create a .NET Core render. So I'm going to open up default. We we'll click on everyone right there and we'll say save the changes. And that's pretty much all you need to do for the CMS system to work. So I'm going to minimize it. I'm going to keep it running. We have to remember, let me take this into the clipboard, localhost 65214, control C that, and I'm going to minimize this guy. Now, if you go ahead and open up the documentation, for instance, for Sitefinity, for how to install the CLI itself. There are two ways to do it. You can do it manually by opening up um, something like Visual Studio or Visual Studio Code, and you will create uh, the type of project for a .NET Core uh, program that has a program.cs and a startup.cs and everything else, but you'll have to do everything by hand. You'll have to change, make changes to the app settings, to the um, to the program.cs, you have to do all the stuff manually. And that's, there is nothing wrong with that, of course, but these uh, first three lines in there will save you so much time. So I definitely recommend for you to have the .NET CLI installed on your machine, uh, very important. So if you don't have that, uh, even if you have .NET Core, make sure you go download the uh, development kit, which will contain the .NET CLI itself. It has to be running. You can check for that really quickly by going to the command line and just typing the word .NET. And if it gives you an error, that means you do not have .NET CLI installed. Just go ahead and install it. It will take a couple of minutes from the Windows downloads. And once uh, it comes back, it will tell you what version you have and you should be good to go. Sounds good. All right, so the first one in here, you need to tell your command line that I would like to make sure there is an access to a NuGet package source different than the one that comes from Microsoft because the .NET utility for the CLI knows only where the Microsoft-based uh, NuGet.org are all the packages, but most of the NuGet packages for Syfinity are not on the Microsoft one. They have their own and it's available under HTTPS nuget.sifinity.com slash nuget. So you'll have to add that. And after that, we would go ahead and add the templates. We'll say .NET new, install the progress Syfinity ASP.NET Core templates. If you don't do this step, you will still be able to create the, the .NET Core render, but you won't see any templates in there at all. We don't want to do that. We want to make sure that we have access to these templates. And then finally, you will create a brand new .NET Core 6.0 at this time. You probably will be able to do it with 7.0 and future version as well. But we will create a brand new Sitefinity project, so .NET new Sitefinity, and we will give it a project name. We can call it whatever we want. Hopefully, that will happen inside of a specific folder. But the last part of the command is the most important part. We're going to tell this project that the CMS version, the Windows.NET Framework 4.8 version of the website is available at a specific URL. And that's the one I just showed you a few minutes ago, which is the local host at a specific port number. That will allow us to generate all the application settings and everything that points automatically to where that CMS is because the .NET Core renderer cannot run without having a CMS system in Windows under .NET Framework um, 4.8 running. Does that make sense? You don't have to worry about step number six in here. We will do that in a different uh, video later on, which how to create widgets and templates and everything using the CLI as well, but we don't need to do that right now. After you do the first three steps, um, the .NET run 
will allow us to compile this and we'll make it available on a specific uh, port number, which is localhost 5000 or 5001, whether you want to use HTTP or HTTPS. And as long as your CMS version is running and this guy is running on port 5000 and 5001, they will be able to talk to each other because I have made the web service uh, available for everyone and you will be able to see your website in .NET Core. The nice thing about this, it does not require Windows. What you're doing right now could happen under a Mac machine or a Linux machine. It doesn't have to use IIS. It could be Castrol, it could be Apache, it could be whatever you want. So that's the beauty about having a completely different application that is not sharing the application pool, is not sharing the entire infrastructure of Sidefinity itself. It could be the one that the public will see and it's running on a Linux machine, a very small application, very, very fast, and you can scale it differently than the back end, which is gonna be the CMS system. So that's the beauty about that. So let's go ahead and do it really fast. I'm gonna copy that first line. We'll do each one of them. We'll say Control C. Let me bring up a command line here really quickly. And we'll say Command. All right, let me bring it in here. And under, for instance, this uh, folder, I'm going to say, uh, let's make a directory here quickly. We'll say uh, SF uh, Core. All right, we can call it anything we want. And we will go ahead into it. We'll say SF Core. There you go. And then I'm going to go ahead and run my first command. This is to add the Sidefinity NuGet package. We'll see if it works. All right, error the system. Oh, okay, so I've done it already. So I get an error that you cannot edit twice. Of course, I've added this before. So in your case, if you have not added it, this will, uh, will do the job just fine. Sounds good. Let's go to the second one. I'm going to add the, uh, the install the templates. We'll say control C this guy. We'll go back in here and we'll control V. Now that will install my templates, even though I have them installed already. Um, it will still install them again. So now I have the renderer for the project, for the widget, for the layout. All of them have been installed. I'm in pretty good shape. Let's go ahead and do the last line. The last line is this .NET in here. We'll go back to our command line. And I'm going to run this one one more time. But this time I need to change some things. Oh, I forgot the D. Let me go ahead all the way to the beginning and add the D for us so we don't get an error. There we go. And the first one is the project name, okay? That will happen underneath the folder that I'm in. Remember, I'm in SF Core, so that will create another folder underneath there. So we'll say, for instance, uh, SF New Site. Sounds good. We can call it anything you want. Is the last one that will be very important to have exactly correctly. So I'm going to remove all that, and let's go ahead and cheat again. What is the name of the site that we had earlier? There it is. It is called localhost 65214. We'll say copy this guy as is. And I'm going to come in here and we'll paste it like that. And we don't not want the backslash at the end. All right. If I run this line right now, folks, so just remember a brand new project will happen. A folder will be called SF New Site underneath the SF Core where I am right now. And it will actually create all the app settings to make this happen for the localhost 65214. Let's push enter. And it is done. Isn't that cool? So if I do a directory in here, you'll notice there is a new site called SF New Site. Let's go ahead to the SF New Site. And now if I say directory, you'll notice all these things got uh, taken care of. If I want to see it in, a, in an editor, for instance, any editor will do. I'm just going to go ahead and bring it up in Visual Studio Code. We'll say code space dot. And that will open up the whole project in here. I will trust it. And these are all the things that are important for you to know about the project we just created. The important things, of course, uh, first of all, the application settings. Notice in here, the normal .NET Core application, but we added the Syfinity section that will tell it, where, oops, look at that. I've actually added it twice, but I can fix that. There we go. So it's going against the local host 65214. And the web service default, this is the one we said everyone can get to, API default. If you didn't change the name, in Sidefinity from API to something else and you're using the default one, that will work just fine. You don't need to make any changes. All right, so that's one thing. So I'm gonna save this, Control S. And I also wanna to go to properties, make sure that the launch settings can tell me where this is gonna go. There is the application URL. I can get to it over uh, SSL for 5001 or the regular port 80 for localhost 5000. So these will both work in here. The final thing that I wanted to show you is the program.cs, which now you don't have to do it by hand. It will happen for you automatically.
So the program uh, .cs, you'll notice that it's adding the uh, the dependency injection for services from Sitefinity. So it's bringing in the progress Sitefinity ASP.NET Core and the form widgets and a lot of other things. And you can add a lot more as well, but this is the minimum that you will need to be able to create template, work with template and widgets and form widgets as well. So you will add the dependency of Sitefinity, you will add the dependency of the iView component models and the form view component model as well. And one thing that is very important, don't forget um, to use static files so it knows about the CSS and JavaScript files that Sitefinity will need as well. Don't forget to uh, app.use Sitefinity and uh, other than the regular routing in .NET Core, you'll have to add the uh, endpoints for map Sitefinity endpoints as well so it knows how to go get the views for all the templates and all the widgets um, and the widget templates as well. So these are the things that you do not have to worry about creating by hand. If you use the .NET uh, creation of the project, it will do all the stuff with it for you. So you don't have to worry about it whatsoever. Isn't that cool? And you, even, you don't even need to go back to the uh, to the command line. You can run your own terminal from here. We say new terminal and I'm inside of the SF new site right away. So we'll say dot net run and that will compile it for the first time and it will run it and we will have it available under two different ports for HTTPS and HTTP and right now it's running on as you can see 5000 and also 5001 as well both of them are running so to make sure I can uh, I can see it working let's go back to here let's open up another tab and I'll say local host 5000 there we go and it's working because we didn't create any pages or anything, but it's still working. And now we are running on .NET Core. Remember, I'm doing this under Windows, but this part itself does not have to be running under Windows. This part can be running under Macs or Linux, and it will be no problem whatsoever. I can now get into the back end by slash Sitefinity. I will log in with exactly the same login that I had for the CMS system as well. Just remember what you're seeing right now is running on the .NET Core side, not on the CMS.NET Framework uh, 4.8. So if I go to Pages, I can do something in here that I couldn't do in the CMS, all right, which is creating a page based on .NET Core. I can only do that from the .NET Core itself. So I say create a page, for instance, we'll call it Home, like that. When I say Continue, this is the part that is not available in the CMS. In the CMS, you'll get a Bootstrap 5, and you'll see four different templates that you can inherit from. But if you're doing this from port 5000 for testing, you will notice there is a .NET Core templates. And now this is how you're going to get the new designer that is not based on just MVC and Bootstrap 5. This will be still Bootstrap 5, but it's a completely new designer. So we'll say select this template and, uh, and it will open up and load the new designer in here. Now I can actually create a new section. There you go. And notice it's a very different designer than we had before. I can actually uh, go to the sections in here. I can split it into uh, maybe two columns or three columns, whatever I want. Notice I can actually create whatever I want in here. Uh, very different look and feel. I can even make it the logo and the navigator. So I'll make it 2575. I can do whatever I want in here. And then on the, the uh, and it can add a widget inside of that section. It could be a content block, an image, a form, a list, whatever you'd like. Let's maybe put the logo for the company in here. And on this side, I will go ahead and put a navigation system, let's say the tab system. And now when I'm done, this will be my home page. Um, I'm gonna go ahead and say publish, and that page will be available. That page that I just created cannot be edited in the CMS system, it can only be edited in the .NET Core system, all right? Um, the other way is possible. If you created an MVC-based uh, page, for instance, you can still edit it in here as well. So I just wanted to make sure in this uh, video just to show everybody that uh, it would be very easy to follow these three commands that we did in the command line to create a brand new renderer for .NET Core under Windows, Linux, or Macs. Uh, as long as you have the CMS running and you know where the URL is or the port number, for instance, locally, you will be able to get it up and running in less than a couple of minutes and you can actually use the new designer and have a lot of fun with that. I hope this was a useful video for you and I look forward to seeing you in other videos coming up for Sitefinity as well. Thank you.